Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try to implement our first function. The main thing that you need to know here are how to construct a list and basically add values to it. So in R, it's called a vector and we want to create an empty vector and start adding more and more values to it. So we're going to learn that first because that's going to be one very important part of our pollutant mean.r function. So let's go ahead and try that out. So let's say I have some vector and it's just called nums and it it contains some random numbers, okay? It doesn't matter what numbers it has, but I'm just going to put in a few numbers here. Now, I want to construct a duplicate vector but what I want to do is I want to pull out one value from nums at a time. And by pulling out one value at a time, I want to then add that value to dupe. So I want to do a loop and I want to pull one value at a time and put it into a vector called dupe. So I'm going to construct an empty vector. This is how you construct a numerical empty vector. Currently, this is what nums look like. And if I showed you dupe, this is what dupe would look like. So as you can see, nums contains the numbers 263256. Dupe contains nothing. It's just an empty array or an empty vector. Now I want to go through nums and pull out one value at a time and add it to dupe. So how do I do that? I'm going to say for i in nums. So this is going to go over each value in nums. So here a better variable would be for num in nums. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that variable. So here let's open a new line. And I'm going to say create a new variable called dupe. And what the new variable dupe will be is actually a concatenation of the already constructed array dupe. So already what dupe previously was, except we're going to add one more value to it this time, which is going to be num. Okay. So what we're doing here, we're saying dupe is now just itself plus a new value. So this is how we pretty much add values at the end of the vector. So once I run this and this finishes running, you're going to see that dupe is going to now be an identical vector um, just like nums. It's going to look just like that. I'm going to run it and I have to close my squiggly brackets here. Now let's take a look at what dupe is. And you can see it's 263256. That's the first very important part in writing our function. So I'm going to leave this one here and I'm going to start now trying to write the function. And as we go along, I'm going to try to pretty much quiz you on it. So feel free to pause your video and implement the functions by yourself as we go on. But okay. <laughs> So the last thing that you need to know about here is how to access one of the columns. So let's say that I have I already have one of the CSV files stored in the variable data. So I'm going to do head data. Okay. And this is going to show you the top few lines. Now, one way to get access to the columns is this way. And I think you know about this way if I do sulfate. But here's one really big problem that occurs here. So let's say that I make some variable like y equal to sulfate. Okay. And now if I do data and I do the dollar sign and I do y, it has no idea what that is. I have to literally type in dollar sign sulfate every time for that to work. Meaning, in fact, that if I use some variable, it's not going to work. So from now on, what I'm going to advise you to do is forget about the dollar sign 
and just avoid it the best you can. Instead, use the two bracket indexing. So here, if you want to get the sulfate, what I would say is do two brackets and do sulfate. This is going to get the sulfate column and that pretty much got you the same thing. So here you can also do mean data sulf. Uh, you have to make sure you put quotes around it, sulfate. And what we can say is na.rm equal true. And this is one way to get the mean. This is one thing that was throwing our function off and made our function incorrect last time. And we need to use the double bracket here. Okay, now we're pretty much ready to put this all together and finish our first function. Okay, so now we are ready to write our function from scratch. So let's get started. The function is called pollutant mean function. The first argument is going to be the directory or the path. The second argument is going to be what function you want to pass in, uh, what, what query you want to pass in. So are you looking for sulfate? Are you looking for nitrate? Or are you looking for sodium? Pretty much whatever you're looking for. That's going to be your pollutant. ID is going to be the file names. So here we're going to say the optional argument is going to be all of them, all 332 unless the user specifies their desired range. So let's create a variable called file list. And we have done this before, but we're going to basically list all the files. Path is going to equal to directory. So whatever we pass in in the directory. Pattern, remember, is going to be your, all extensions are ending as CSV. So that's going to be your pattern that you're looking for because it's the files are called 001.csv, 002.csv, and so on. Full name, full names. We want the full path of the file. So we don't just want 001.csv, 002. We want downloads, slash, spec data, slash, 001.csv. That's a lot more useful for us. Now I'm going to create that empty vector like we talked about in the previous video and the constructor is and the constructor here is going to be just called numer so the constructor here is called uh, numeric and we are calling it values and it's just an empty vector right now so we're going to say for i in id so this is just any number in one and 332 unless the user specifies then it'll be something like 2 through 10 or 1 through 10 whatnot we're going to create something data which is just going to be your file list and that number I think you get that part and now remember the trick we want to do is we want to go through each file and every time we calculate the mean from a file we need to save that mean. Then we need to go through another file, calculate the mean, save that mean. The reason why we created this vector in line three is for that exact reason. So we can go through multiple files and store all our values in here before we iterate to the next loop. Because every time you loop again, you're losing your previous information. So the reason why we're using a vector is so it can retain the information for a longer period of time. So here what we're doing is we're saying, hey, the new vector values is just going to be the previous vector values concatenated with now the new piece of information we have, which is data, so the new file, and we just pretty much append one mean value to values. So here, remember to, instead of using the dollar sign and saying pollutant, you're going to get an error because remember here you would have to only say sulfate otherwise you get an error or you have to say nitrate otherwise you get an error so here the variable pollutant would mean nothing so we're actually going to have to use this index with the double brackets and pass in pollutant 
And remember, pollutant is going to be something like sulfate or nitrate. It's going to be like a string. And we're going to close this. And now all we do at the end is we just get the mean and pretty much remove our non-usable values or our non-available values rather, NA. Okay, so this is working correctly. Now to test that this is working correctly, let's just do a test case here. And let's say pollutant mean, and I'm going to put in the location of where this is at. So let's do that. Dropbox, GitHub, Coursera. Okay, so that's the path, and we want to look for sulfate. And if I run this, we should get back 3.189, followed by a few numbers. So let's try to run this and see what we get back, okay? So I'm going to, oh, whoops, it should be called pollutant mean. Save. And now let's run it. So it's taking a second. And you can't see out of the screen, but this is the result that I got in this case. Because that part is out of the screencast video scope, but this is the main result that I got. So if you run this code and you run it on spec data, you're going to get the same result. That's how you code the pollutant mean function from scratch. In the next video, we're going to code the second function. Okay.